Well, we thank God for his presence. We thank God for his presence. We thank God for what he's about to do in your lives. I want to welcome all of you from wherever you are watching. And you're welcome to the last day of the July prophetic encounter. And the Bible says that Jesus stood on the last day and cried with a loud voice, saying, If anyone thirsts, let him come and drink. So that means the last day is everybody's day. So tonight is your night. I want to encourage you to be ready because God is going to do unusual things in your lives. Hosea chapter 6 verse 3 the Bible says, Hosea chapter 6, verse 1 and 2, it says, Come, let us return to the Lord, for he has torn, but he, he will heal us. Amen. He has stricken, but he will bind us up. After two days, he will revive us. Amen. And on the third day, he will raise us up, that we may live in his sight. Tonight, I have no doubt that it's your night of resurrection. Amen. The power of God is going to revive you. Anything that has been dead in your life is going to be resurrected today. Anything that has been dead will be risen today by the reason of the anointing in the mighty name of Jesus. Well, I want to encourage you that uh, during our prophetic encounter, for those of you who are joining us for the first time, we partake of communion, and then on the last day, we partake of communion and the anointing service. So prepare the communion elements and anointings now, uh, so that later on, when it's time for us to go into the communion and anointing service, you don't have to get up in Jesus' name. So prepare your communion elements, prepare your anointing oil and be ready and be expectant. Be praying through this service because tonight I, I have a strong conviction that the Holy Spirit is going to do something awesome in your lives in the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, are you ready for the word? Okay, turn with me please in your Bibles to the book of Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 1 and 2. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 1 and 2. I also want to encourage you that share the link with as many people as possible so that they can watch together with you. Uh, share the link to uh, 250 people on your phone. Share the link on your Facebook pages. Uh, share the link to, to your whatsapp contact share the link for on twitter on instagram whatever social media platform you are on share the link amen and let others participate with you in this service and i know that you'll be blessed in the mighty name of jesus all right we're ready to go into the word so uh turn with me please in your bibles to uh deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 1 and 2 Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 1 and 2 the Bible says that now it shall come to pass if you shall diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God to observe carefully and to do all his commandments which I command you today that the Lord your God will set you high above all the nations of the earth and all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you because you obey the voice of the lord your god and we are blessed by the reading of god's word i'm continuing and concluding the message i started on wednesday that i have titled walking in prompt obedience walking in prompt obedience and this is part three walking in prompt obedience and this is part three 
God wants his children to be the head and not the tail. God's ultimate desire when he made man was for man to have dominion here on earth. So the Bible says in Genesis chapter 1 verse 26 to 28, God said, Let us make man in our own image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. Notice that. And in the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. The Bible says that, and God blessed them. Verse 28 of Genesis chapter 1. The Bible says that then God blessed them. So man didn't do anything before he was blessed. Why? Because God's ultimate desire is for his children to operate here on earth just like he operated in heaven. So when God made you, God blessed you and God said to man that be fruitful multiply fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over everything that is in it because God wants you and I to operate here on earth exercising our dominion mandate and I know without any shadow of doubt that by the time we finish today, <clears throat> the power of God will be so strong to translate you from any kingdom of darkness into the marvelous light in the name of Jesus. So God's desire is for his children to rule here on earth. But the only way we can rule and have dominion and operate in the area that God has called us to operate in is for us to walk in obedience. So Deuteronomy chapter 1 verse 28, Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 1, God says, if you shall diligently hearken, if you shall diligently listen and obey my voice and observe carefully all the commandments which I command you today, which you are hearing from his word today, God says he will set you above all the nations of the earth. I don't know about you, but I see you coming into the season where you are above nations. Let me hear a living amen. I said, I see you of being above every nation. Maybe today you might not be above any nation, but give yourself a few years. David was a shepherd boy. But within 40 years later, he became the most wealthiest man. He became the mo most prominent man in the whole world. God took him from nothing into greatness. That's why David said, he picked me up from the Mary clay and set my feet upon the mountains. Somebody is about to be lifted in this season. The whole world will hear of you because you are a child of God. God says, and he will set you high above all the nations of the earth. God is going to set you high above, not some nations, all the nations of the earth. A time is coming where you will be more stronger, more powerful than a whole nation combined because you are obeying the voice of the Lord your God. And God says in verse 2, he said, and all these blessings shall come and overtake you. All these blessings, not some, all these blessings will come and overtake you. Now, what are the blessings that God is talking about? We're going to look at it from 
verse 2 to verse 13, and then you're going to see the blessings that are going to overtake you. You've had enough of of poverty overtaking you. You've had enough of cases overtaking you. But in this season, the blessing of the Lord will overtake you. Why? Because the Bible said, because you obey the voice of the Lord your God. Hallelujah. And in verse 3, we are going to start looking at the blessings that God is saying that will overtake you in Deuteronomy chapter 28 from verse 1 to 13. Verse 3, the Bible says, Blessed shall you be in the city, and blessed shall you be in the country. Say amen to that. Every time you hear me talk about the blessing, say amen to it. Because when you say amen to it, so shall it be in your life. So in verse 4, God says, Blessed shall be the fruit of your body. So all of you trusting God for the fruit of the womb, I decree right now that blessed shall be the fruit of your body. That means a year about this time, that spirit of barrenness is broken. You will not become a laughing stock in that family. You will not become a laughing stock in that community. Any case of barrenness, it is broken now in the name of Jesus. It says the produce of your ground and the increase of your heads are all blessed. The increase of your cattle and the offsprings of your flocks, they are all blessed. Blessed shall be your basket and your kneading bowl. Say amen to that. Blessed shall you be when you come in. Say amen. Amen. And blessed shall you be when you go out. In other words, your coming in and your going out is blessed. It says the Lord will cause your enemies who rise up against you to be defeated before your face. Say amen. Amen. So anyone, anywhere trying to be your enemy in this season before the end of this prophetic encounter. God is going to cause them to be defeated before your face. They shall come against you in one way and they shall flee in seven ways. Because the spirit of the Lord will raise a standard against them. The Lord will command the blessing on you and your storehouse. That's a good place to shout amen. Amen. Your storehouse there represents your bank account. It represents your businesses. In this season, your business shall flourish. It said, and in all to which you set your hand, everything you put your hand to in this season, it is blessed. The righteous shall flourish in the land like a palm tree. You will be great in this season. And God says that he will bless you in the land which the Lord your God is giving you. Now, I don't know which land you find yourself in, but whether you are in your own land or in a foreign land, God is blessing you this day. The Lord will establish you as his holy people to himself, just as he has sworn to you. If you keep the commandments of the Lord your God and walk in his ways, then you will walk in the blessing. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. So you are blessed on every side. I said, you are blessed on every side. Then all the peoples of the earth shall see that you are called by the name of the Lord, and they shall be afraid of you. They shall be afraid of you. When your name is taken to any occultic altar, it shall backfire. They will say, I don't want to touch this name because this name is a powerful name. This name is a blessed name. In the name of Jesus, I decree over you that you are coming into a season of prominence. And the Lord will grant you plenty of goods. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
in the fruit of your body and in the increase of your livestock and in the produce of your ground, in the land which the Lord swore to your fathers to give you, the Lord will open, I love this one, the Lord will open his good treasure. Somebody say amen. Amen. So God has some good treasures waiting for you. The Lord will open his good treasure. And look at the good treasure. The good treasure is the heavens. I decree over you today that the heavens are open over you in the name of Jesus. And to give you the rain to your land in its season. You will not lack any good thing in your season any longer. Hallelujah. And to bless all the works of your hands from today, your hands will carry greatness. Your hands will carry greatness. Everything your hand touches from today, it is declared blessed. You shall lend to many nations and you shall not borrow. Oh, glory be to God. You have borrowed for all these years, but your borrowing season has come to an end. You have now entered into a new season of lending. And many of you watching me right now, minimum 5,000 of you watching right now will will be lending to nations. Minimum 10,000 of you watching now will be lending to nations. Minimum 100,000 of you right now watching will be lending to nations in the mighty name of Jesus. The Bible says that, and the Lord will make you the head and not the tail. He will make you the head and not the tail. And you shall be above only and never beneath. If you heed, if you listen, if you obey to the commandments of the Lord your God, which he command you today, and you are careful to observe them. So God wants to place you above. He wants to make you the head and never the tail. Listen to me. Obedience is the master key to a victorious Christian life. Obedience is the master key to a victorious Christian life. James chapter 3, verse 3. It says, Indeed, we put bits in horses' mouth that they may obey us, and we turn their whole body. Do you see that? We put bits in horses' mouth that they may do what? Obey us, and we turn their whole body. So that means obedience is the master key to a victorious Christian life. Once you are working in obedience, you begin to operate in dominion. You begin to operate in the abundance. The days of lack comes to an end in the name of Jesus. Write this down. Obedience might be costly. But its end result is a lifetime of great rewards. Obedience might be costly, but its end result is a lifetime of great rewards. So, yes, you might be right now in a situation where God is requesting obedience from you. It might be costly. Like Abraham, God might be demanding your only Isaac from you. You can hear clearly the voice of the Holy Spirit telling you to sacrifice your only son, Isaac. And as you do that, you are coming into a season where God is going to swear his blessings unto you in the mighty name of Jesus. Unfortunately, many want to eat the good of the land, but they are not willing to walk in obedience to the word of God. Many want to eat the good of the land. But they are not willing to walk in obedience to the word of God. So obedience is important. Are you following me? And eating the good of the land is in your willingness and in your obedience. Eating the good of the land is in your willingness 
and in your obedience. Isaiah chapter 1 verse 19. It says, if you be willing or if you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. So the good of the land is lying before you. The key to access the good of the land and to enjoy the good of the land is obedience, is prompt obedience. If you can just promptly obey God, then he will set before you the good of the land. So therefore, receive grace to walk in prompt obedience from henceforth in the name of Jesus. Reason why some of the children of Israel could not enter into the promised land was because they were disobedient. Some of them were disobedient to a point where God called them stiff neck people. They were so disobedient. Their disobedience made them a statue. I decree over you in this season that grace to obey God Amen. to the end comes Amen. upon you Amen. in the name of Jesus. Listen, write this down. Anything you get outside of the will of God will be lost in due time. Anything you get outside of the will of God will be lost in due time. If it's not God, it's not good. Write that down. If it's not God, then it's not good. If it's not God, then it's not good. So it's important that you get everything you are believing God for within the context of God's will. Because if it's not God, then it's not good. It doesn't matter how powerful you think you are today or how anointed you think you are today. If you don't obey the word of God, it's just a matter of time. Are you listening to what I'm saying? It doesn't matter how powerful you think you are today. It doesn't matter how anointed you think you are today. If you don't obey the word of God, it's just a matter of time. Because there is no future for those who disobey the word of God. You don't believe me? Go and ask Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar was strong-headed, an arrogant and prideful king, and God decided to humble him. He was sent into a bush to go and learn humility for seven years with the animals. So listen to me, it doesn't matter where you think you are today. If you don't humble yourself and obey God, it's just a matter of time. Ask Saul, the first king of Israel, he got to a point where he became so powerful. He became so powerful. And as a result of that level of power, he started becoming arrogant. God gave him a simple instruction. Go and destroy everything. Samuel gave him an instruction to go and destroy everything. And when he went, he decided not to destroy everything. He said he brought some of the booty of the, land, of the wall. To come and sacrifice unto God. But God never requested any booty of the land. So in 1 Samuel 15, 22 to 23. So Samuel said to Saul. Has the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices. As in obeying the voice of the Lord. Question. Behold. To obey is better than sacrifice Amen. and to heed than fat of rams. God is not interested in disobedient offerings. Are you following what I'm saying? Don't think that your offering is anything to God. When God gives you specific instruction, it's like those who know they are supposed to tithe 10% of their salary of all to God and they decide to tithe 9% or 8% or 1% thinking God is interested in your fat of rams. God says to obey is better than sacrifice. Are you following what I'm saying? 
to obey is better than sacrifice. And yesterday we learned how when Adam listened to the voice of his wife and not the voice of God, God kicked him out of the garden of Eden. Every time you disobey God or every time you place the voice of man over the voice of God, God is going to cause the heavens to be closed over you. Verse 23 of 1 Samuel chapter 15, Samuel said to Saul, For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Because you have rejected, listen to me, this is very important. God says, because you have rejected the word of the Lord, he has also rejected you from being king. So every time you disobey God's word, God rejects you. Are you following what I'm saying? God says, Samuel said to Saul, because you have rejected the word of the Lord, God has also rejected you from being king. I pray for you today that an unusual grace to walk on obedience an unusual grace to walk in obedience will come upon you today because there is no place for the arrogant in the kingdom of God. Write this down. Prompt and radical obedience to God is better than any sacrifice you offer to him in disobedience. Prompt and radical obedience to God is better than any sacrifice you offer to him in disobedience. God is not committed to you to give, God is not committed to give you another instruction if you have not obeyed the last one. So some of you are stuck where you are because God is not committed to give you another instruction if you have not obeyed the last one. The last instruction God gave you. Question, have you obeyed him? God said pray the last time. Did you pray? God said win a soul the last time. Last week, did you win a soul? God told you last year or three years ago, win a soul. You haven't won a soul. And you are believing God for that house. God is also waiting on you to obey the last instruction he gave you. Then he's going to get your needs met. Are you following what I'm saying? God cannot be mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he reap. Don't be deceived, my brother. Don't be deceived, my sister. For God is not mocked. Galatians 6, 7 and 8. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he reap. He that soweth to the flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. And he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap eternal life. So it's time to obey God. It's time to sow obedience. When you sow obedience, you reap blessings. When you sow obedience, the Bible says that God's blessings will come and overtake you. Hallelujah. When you walk in obedience, God puts a hedge of his glory around you. Oh, I love this. But disobedience removes the hedge of God from you and makes you vulnerable to any form of attack. When you walk in prompt and radical obedience, God puts a hedge of his glory around you. But the moment you deviate into disobedience, God removes the hedge and makes you vulnerable to any form of attack. Job chapter 1 verse 10. Job chapter 1 verse 10. Satan came to the meeting of God's children and said to God, have you considered your servant Job? He is serving you because you have blessed him. 
But God said to Satan, no, Job is not serving me because of the blessing. I know this man, he, he's, he eschews evil. He's upright. He's a, he's a righteous man. He's a holy man. And Satan said, well, the reason why said, uh, Job is flourishing and prospering is because you have made a hedge around him and around his household, and around all that he has on every side. You have blessed the work of his hands, and his possessions have increased in the land. Listen to me, precious one. You don't see the glory when the glory of God is covering you. But Satan sees the glory. That's why you can't take the covering of the glory of God for granted. Are you following me? When Adam and Eve were, was walking in the garden, when the animals and all the things, all the plants and everything sees Adam and Eve, they saw Adam and Eve just like God. Because remember, God made Adam in his image. God made Adam and Eve in his image. And the Bible says that God comes down and talks to Adam in the cool of the day. He comes into to, to the garden and talks to Adam in the cool of the day. So when God comes down in the garden and God is walking with Adam in the garden, notice something very carefully. God made Adam in his own image. So that means Adam had the same glory God had on him in heaven. Oh my God, this is awesome. God made Adam to to replicate him here on earth. God made Adam in his own likeness, in his own image. So that means when Adam and God are walking together, they are like identical twins on earth. You can't differentiate whether this is Adam or this is God because Adam was made in the image of God. And so when the animals see Adam, they think this is God. Because Adam and, 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 and God were operating in the same level of glory. I want you to understand that. They were operating in the same level of glory. But the moment Adam and Eve seen, the glory departed. Are you following me? The glory, the covering departed. So the moment they seen, the Bible says that they were aware of themselves that they are now naked. What was covering them before they became naked? It was the glory of God. The glory of God was like a hedge that was covering them. Just like Job, the glory of God was the hedge that was covering him, that was covering his household, that was covering all his properties. That's why the devil could not penetrate. Every time the glory of God is covering you, no weapon of the enemy formed or fashioned against you can penetrate. Why? Because there is nothing greater than the glory of God. So in Matthew 21, 33, the Bible says that Jesus said, Hear another parable. There was a certain landowner who planted a vineyard and set a hedge around it and set the glory around it and set a hedge. The hedge there is the glory of God. The hedge there is the covering of God. Every time you walk in obedience, God puts a hedge around you. The devil wants to strike you dead, but he can't kill you. I remember many years ago as a little child, as a young boy, little child, growing up in my neighborhood, one day I went out and slept around a gate nearby. And when I slept on the mat on a gate, the mat, the wind blew the mat and the mat covered me. And in that particular house, they had a bakery factory in there. So on that particular Friday afternoon, the truck came to deliver flour. And I, I was right under the tire of that huge truck full of flies. They opened the gate. Guess what? The car started 
it couldn't start. All of a sudden, the car stopped. The driver started the car for several times. The car didn't start. Why? Because the glory of God has covered this young boy whom God knew that a time is coming where God is going to use him to be a blessing to the world. God is going to use him to be a solution to the world. So the glory of God covered me in my innocent state in that mat. They started the car several times. It didn't start. Then all of a sudden, the owner of the bakery said, whose mat is there under the truck? The moment they came and they removed the mat, here is this young innocent boy sleeping one sunny afternoon. And the moment they removed the, tr- the mat from there, the truck started on its own. That can only be the glory. And I'm telling you, when you walk in prompt obedience, the glory of God comes like a hedge. He covers you, and when he covers you, no evil can penetrate. If they take your name to any demonic altar, it will backfire. If they take your marriage to any demonic altar, it will backfire. Your responsibility is just to walk in the glory. Walk in prompt obedience. Listen, if if and when you break the hedge, the serpent will bite. That's why it's important. It's important to walk in prompt obedience. Numbers chapter 21 from verse 4. I'm getting excited. I don't want to get excited because there's so much I've got to give you. Praise God. The Bible says that then they journeyed from Mount Horm to a way of the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom. And the soul of the people became very discouraged on the way. And the people spoke against God and against Moses. Look at that. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no food, no water. Our soul, Lord's this worthless bread. So the Lord sent fiery serpents among them. Be careful not to murmur against God and his prophets. Be careful not to murmur against God and his called chosen men and women of God. So the Bible says that because they murmured and complained against him and and Moses, God sent fiery serpents among the people. And the serpent serpents beat the people, and many of the people of Israel died. What a sad story. Therefore, the people came to Moses and said, We have seen, for we have spoken against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord that he may take the serpents from us. So Moses prayed for the people. Then the Lord said to Moses, Make a fairy serpent. Then the Lord said to Moses, Make a fairy serpent. And set it on a pole. And it shall be that everyone who is beaten, when he looks at it, shall leave. That's a sign of Jesus Christ on the cross. So Moses made a bronze serpent and put it on a pole. And so it was when a serpent had beaten anyone who had looked at the bronze serpent, he leaves. Glory be to God. So you see what happens. Every time you break the hedge, the serpent will bite. That's why you don't have to break the hedge. Quickly, let's go and look at five unbreakable blessings that follows those who obey God promptly. Five unbreakable blessings that follows those who obey God promptly. Number one, you will spend your days in prosperity and your years in pleasures. Number one, you will spend your days in prosperity and your years in pleasures. Glory be to God. Job chapter 36 verse 11. It says, if they obey and serve him, they shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasure. Say amen to that. Job 36 verse 11. If they'll obey and serve him, they shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasures. Number two, 
Number two, you will eat the good of the land. Oh my God. You will eat the good of the land. Five unbreakable blessings that follow those who obey God. Number two, you will eat the good of the land. Isaiah chapter 1 verse 19. It says, if you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. Number three, unbreakable blessings that follow those who obey is you will inherit large and beautiful cities you did not build. You will inherit large and beautiful cities you did not build. Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 10 to 12. Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 10 to 12. It says, so it shall be when the Lord your God brings you into the land which he has swore to you, your fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give you large and beautiful cities which you did not build, houses full of, oh my God, houses, houses full of good things which you did not build. Or you did not fill. Hewn out wells which you did not dig. Vineyards and olive trees which you did not plant. But when you are eating and you are full, verse 12, God says, beware, then beware, lest you forget the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. Don't forget God when he blesses you. Unfortunately, there are many Christians who get amnesia the moment God blesses them. We pray for you and God blesses you. We can't see your brake light again. May that not be so in your life. Number four, unbreakable blessing that follow those who obey is they, you will be set high above all nations of the earth. Amen. Say amen to that. Amen. Number five, you'll be set high. High above all nations of the earth. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 1. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 1. It says, Now it shall come to pass, if you shall diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God, to observe carefully all his commandments, which I command you today, that the Lord your God will set you high above all nations of the earth. Say amen to that. Amen. Number five unbreakable blessings that follow those who obey is that you operate under an open heaven of open windows of heaven. Glory Amen. be to God. Amen. You operate under an open windows of heaven. Oh, that's so exciting. Amen. Glory be to God. Amen. I see somebody coming into this season in Jesus' name. Malachi chapter three from verse eight. To 12. Malachi chapter 3 from verse 8 to 12. It says, Will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me. But you say, Wherein have we robbed you? And God says, You have robbed me in tithes and in offerings. Malachi chapter 3, Malachi chapter 3 from verse 8 to 12. Because God says you have robbed me, he said in verse 9, you are cursed with a curse. For you have robbed me, even this whole nation. <clears throat> then God says in verse 10, to avert the curse, the double curse, God says, bring all the tithes into my storehouse, that there may be food in my house, and try me in this, says the Lord of hosts. Amen? Amen. If I will not open for you the windows of heaven Amen. and pour out for you such a blessing Amen. that there will not be room enough to receive it. Amen. And I will rebuke Amen. the devourer for your sakes. We had a testimony yesterday of... of uh, one of our uh, 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 members who, who uh, in their company, there's redundancy going on, but she was exempted Amen. because she's a faithful tither. Amen. God says, when you tithe, 
I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes. Anything trying to devour you in this season is rebuked in the name of Jesus. It says, so shall he not destroy the fruit of your ground. Nor shall the vine fail to bear fruit for you in the field, says the Lord of hosts. I love verse 12. It says, and all nations will call you blessed because you tithe. All nations, not not individuals. All nations will call you blessed for you will be a delightsome land, says the Lord of hosts. Is somebody saying amen to that? Nations will call you blessed. Nations will see the blessing working in your life. And they will know of a truth that you are truly a child of God in the name of Jesus. Listen, write this down. Your obedience is in your, your breakthrough is in your obedience. You are believing God for a breakthrough. Your breakthrough is in your obedience. That's why the Bible says to obey is better than sacrifice. When you walk in prompt obedience, God will use selfish systems to sustain you. Oh, Lord, have mercy. I said when you (laughs) walk in prompt obedience, God will use selfish systems to sustain you. Somebody say amen to that. Let me show you how God does it in 1 Kings chapter 17 from verse 1 to 6. 1 Kings chapter 17 from verse 1 to 6. The Bible says that, And Elijah the Tisbite of the inhabitants of Gilead said to Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel lives, before whom I stand, there shall not be a dew nor rain these years except at my word. Then the word of the Lord came to him, saying, Get away from there and turn eastward, and hide by the brook Cherith, which flows in Jordan. I want you to underline Hide by the brook Cherith, which flows into Jordan. And God says, and it will be that you will drink from the brook. And I have commanded the ravens to feed you there. Do you know what God is saying? Ravens don't feed their baby ravens. Ravens are the most selfish birds among all the bird clan. Ravens are so selfish that they don't feed their little babies. But God is saying that in the season of famine, in a time of a pandemic, in a time where crisis, there is, there is recession, a global recession, where many countries, uh, uh, economies have shrunk into minus 20, minus 30%. God is saying that in that season, he will cause selfish systems, selfish nations, selfish institutions to feed you. Say amen to that. God is saying he will cause selfish ravens to feed you. Now, I want you to notice that at this point, Elijah had prophesied that there should not be rain. So for three and a half years, there hasn't been rain. And yet, God is sustaining Elijah in this severe famine. In this famine, women were boiling their children and eating. That was how severe it was. But God was sustaining his his servant. Because Elijah walked in prompt obedience. Elijah walked in prompt obedience. And God said to Elijah, And it will come to pass that you will drink from the brook, and I have commanded the ravens to feed you there. Selfish systems are about to feed you in the name of Jesus. 
I love Elijah's response. Verse 5, the Bible says that, So he went and did according to the word of the Lord. Did you see prompt obedience there? Elijah went and did according to the word of the Lord. For he went and stayed by the brook Cherub, which flows into Jordan. The ravens, look at verse 6, the ravens brought him bread and meat in the morning and, in the, and bread and meat in the evening. And he drank from the brook. Do you see how God does it? When God tells you that if you obey, he will cause selfish systems to feed you, he's well able. He's not a man that he shall lie. Has he said and will he not do it? Has he spoken and he will not bring it to pass? Every time God asks you to obey him in a certain area, it is to your advantage. Amen. Can you imagine what would have happened if Elijah had not obeyed God promptly? Elijah would have died like the many people who died in the midst of the famine. But Elijah obeyed God. Number two. When you walk in prompt obedience, God will use those who are nothing in society to manifest his glory to you. Oh, I love this. This is awesome. First Kings chapter 17, verse 8 to 12. Same First Kings. I want to show you some truths that will help you today in your walk with God. The Bible says that then the word of the Lord came to Elijah saying, Arise, go to Zarephath, which belongs to Zidon. I want you to notice what God is saying here. God wants to take care of Elijah. Now the brook is dried up. The ravens have stopped bringing meat. So God has asked Elijah to now go to Zarephath. Which belongs to Zidon. So that means Zidon owned the city of Zarephath. That should presuppose that Zidon was a very wealthy man. But God never asked Elijah to go to Zidon. Are you following me? God never asked Elijah to go to Zidon, the owner of the city of Zarephath. But God said to him, go to Arise, go to Zarephath, which belongs to Zidon, and dwell there. See, I have commanded a widow there to provide for you. Why would God use such a person? God could have used a wealthy man or a wealthy woman in that city. But God decided to use a poor widow to bring honor and glory to his name. Verse 10, the Bible says that, And Elijah arose and went to Zarephath. Do you see prompt obedience there again? And when he came to the gate of the city, indeed, just as God said it, a widow was there gathering sticks. And he called to her and said, Please bring me a little water in a cup that I may drink. This is to those of you who are watching this. Listen, it is your responsibility to always refresh the anointing that blesses you. Elijah said to the woman, bring me a little water in a cup that I may drink. Remember, Jesus said, when you give a cup of water to a prophet, you will receive a prophet's reward. Do you remember that? So before this woman could receive the prophet's reward, she has to act on the word of God by first refreshing the anointing. Verse 11, the Bible says, So as she was going to get it, now she was going to get it, verse 11 of 2 Kings chapter 17, and as she was going to get the water, the Bible says that Elijah called her and said, Please, bring me a morsel of bread on your hand. <laughs> Isn't it interesting? Now, uh, uh, this woman, now remember, it has not rained for three and a half years. It has not rained. So, so water in those days is a very priceless commodity. 
Water is scarce. Elijah says to this woman, go and bring me water to drink. The, uh, while the woman is going, Elijah said to her, you know what? Don't only bring water. Bring me a muscle of bread in your hand. <laughs> Verse 12 of 1 Kings chapter 17. The Bible says, so she said, as the Lord your God lives, prophet, I do not have bread. <laughs> he said, I do not have bread. All I have is a handful of flour in a bean and a little oil of jar. And see, I am gathering a couple of sticks that I may go and prepare it for myself and my son that we may eat and die. I want you to notice that carefully. The woman was very honest with the man of God. The woman said to Elijah, all I have is a little flour and a little jar of oil. And look, because I don't have enough, all I am gathering is two sticks. I'm gathering two sticks that I may go and prepare this little flour I have that me and my son will eat. The moment we finish eating this food now, the next thing for us is death because we have nothing else. But even though the woman said that, look at what Elijah said to her in verse 13. The Bible says, Elijah said to her, do not fear. Oh, I love this. I said to somebody, do not fear. I don't know what kind of fear that has gripped you. Maybe like this widow woman, all you have is a flour and a jar of oil, little, that after you've eaten, you and your family are going to die. But as a set man of God, called by God, I did not call myself, God called me. I have come to say to you, do not fear. Do as I have said, but make me a small cake from it first. Oh my God. Elisha is make, Elijah is making this case very difficult for this woman. Elijah is trying to teach this woman how to live by faith. For the Bible says, the just shall live by faith. For we do not walk by sight, but we walk by faith. Are you following what I'm saying? So Elijah said to her, hey woman, you say you have something little that cannot even make bread? I demand of you, make me a small cake from what you have. And bring it to me to eat first. After I have eaten, then you and your son can go and eat what is left. Verse 14. The Bible says that so. For thus says the Lord God of Israel. The bean of flour shall not be used up. Nor shall the jar of oil run dry. Until the Lord sends rain on the earth. Amen. Say amen to that. Amen. Say a good amen to that. Amen. Elijah said, woman, woman, I'm telling you that what you have will not finish because I am a man who walks in prompt obedience. If you can learn how to walk in prompt obedience just like I have all these years, what you have in your house is not going to finish until God sends rain on the earth. Verse 15, the Bible says, that, So the woman went away and did according to the word of Elijah. Oh, I love this woman. So the woman went away and did according to all the words of Elijah. That means she also walked in prompt obedience. She had said, all I have is a little, I'm going to eat and die. But when the man of God instructed her, she did not disobey. She went and did according to the word of Elijah. And she and her household ate many days after that. Look at that. Now, initially, this woman didn't tell us 
that she had many people in her house. She said, just me and my son are going to eat what we have and die. But the moment she walked in prompt obedience, God multiplied her resources. And that resources was now able not just to feed her and her son, but to feed her entire household for many days. You can never serve God and go down. Verse 16, finally, the Bible says, the bean of flour was not used up, nor did the jar of oil run dry, according to the word of the Lord, which is spoke by Elijah. I speak to you right now, all of you watching from around the world, that what you have in this season will not run dry. I release the grace for multiplication. The glory of God. That same glory that multiplies the glory of God that multiplied that five loaves and two fishes in the hands of Jesus. I release that grace upon you now to multiply resources into your kingdom and into your hands in the name of Jesus. Listen, obedience might be costly. Write it down. But its end result is rewarding. Obedience might be costly, but its end reward is always rewarding. When this woman obeyed, she saw the reward. Every act of obedience is honored by God. Every act of your obedience will be honored by God in this season. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As we are getting ready to close. Listen. Elijah said to this poor widow. Make for me first. A cake to eat. And you and your family shall not lack. The woman did that. And we saw the end result. Jesus told Peter. Give me your boat first. And when you give me your boat. I will give you fishes. Luke chapter 1 from verse 5. Verse, verse 1, 1 to 7. Luke chapter 1, verse, Luke, we won't read it. Luke chapter 5, verse 1 to 7. Jesus said to us, seek first the kingdom of God by winning souls. Amen? Amen. Seek first the kingdom of God by winning souls. And all the material things that the world is looking for shall come chasing you. Matthew six thirty three. Just walk in prompt obedience. We'll read it. These are scriptures for you to go and look into and study further. Job said, Dedicate yourself to serving in the house of God. And God will give you days of prosperity and years of pleasures. Job chapter 36 verse 11. Finally, God said, Be dedicated to covenant practice of tithes and offerings. And I will open you the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing that you may not have room enough to contain my blessings. Malachi 3, 10, 8 to 11. Malachi 3, 8 to 12 or 8 to 11. So listen to God's word. When God instructs you, follow his instructions. Hallelujah. Finally, as we get ready to close, obedience opens up your destiny into unlimited realms of glory. Somebody say amen to that. Obedience opens up your destiny into unlimited realms of glory. I want to come into that level in an unusual dimension. And by the grace of God in all humility, I'm already there. Glory be to God. Write this down. Prompt obedience is the gateway to God's sworn blessings. Prompt obedience is the gateway to God's sworn blessings. Genesis chapter 22 from verse 1 to 3. Genesis chapter 22, 
from verse 1 to 3. The Bible says that, and it shall come to pass, after these things, now it came to pass, after these things, that, the, that God tested Abraham to see how obedient he was. And God said to Abraham, <laughs> Abraham, and Abraham said, here I am. Most of you sometimes when God calls you, you say, God, I'm not here. I remember many years ago when God asked me to give my only tiny offering in church. It was less than one pound then, probably even less than 50p in current economy calculated into that currency. It was nothing. But I was crying. <laughs> because that was my Isaac. That was all I had. I was crying. I was crying that the offering basket would skip me. But the more I was crying, praying that the offering basket should not come close, the quicker the offering basket was coming. So God said to Abraham, take now your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and, after, and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains which I will tell you. Verse 3, the Bible says, that So Abraham rose up how early in the morning and saddled his donkey and took two of his young men with him. Isaac and his son, and he split the wood for a burnt offering, and arose and went to the place of which God had told him. Do you see prompt obedience? God said to Abraham, I need your only son. The Bible says that Abraham rose up how early in the morning. Finally, finally, as we close, let me show you results of prompt obedience. When it comes to Abraham's case, results of prompt obedience. Genesis chapter 22, verse 15 to 18. Somebody is about to come into the sworn blessing. Now you know the story after Abraham took his son and laid the wood and everything in order. Said he was about to kill his son. The Bible says that then the angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time out of heaven. And said, by myself have I sworn, says the Lord. Because you have done this thing. Do you see when it comes to obedience, you have to do before God blesses you? Check everyone. Peter, as he had done. The servants at the wedding of Canaan, after they had done. Abraham, after he had done. Isaac, after he has done. Jacob, after after he has done, Joseph, after he has done, Paul, after he has done, Jesus, after he has done, then the blessing follows. That is what I call prompt obedience. If you don't do, nothing will follow you. <laughs> oh, thank you, Jesus. He said, and by myself have I sworn, says the Lord, because you have done this thing, and have not withheld your son, your only son. God says, in blessing, I will bless you. And in multiplying, I will multiply your descendants. As the stars of the heaven, as the sun which is on the seashore. That is our covenant right there for Solution Chapel International. My father prayed upon me. Many years ago before he died. He said that church will become. The members will become like the sand on the seashore. I received it. And we are seeing a manifestation of the glory of that prophetic word. Prophetic blessing that came from my natural father. Is happening today. God said this, your, your descendants will be like the stars of the heaven and like the sun which is on the seashore. And your descendants shall possess the gates of their enemies. Somebody shout amen to that. You will possess the gates of your enemies like a dream in the night. No one will be able to stand before you and overpower you. 
Finally, in verse 18, God said to Abraham, And in your seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, because you have obeyed my voice. Did you see that? Because you have obeyed my voice. My final prayer for you before we close is Romans chapter 16, verse 19. As we get ready to partake of the communion, my final prayer for you before we close is Romans chapter 16, verse 19. It says, For your obedience has become known to all. Say amen to amen. that. May your obedience become known to all. Amen. For your obedience has become known to all. Amen. Therefore, I am glad on your behalf. But I want you to be wise in what is good and simple concerning evil. My prayer for you, my prayer for you is that your obedience will become known to all. Right now, in the name of Jesus, receive grace to walk in prompt obedience. I've taken three days to share God's word with you in detail, without compromise. Share the mind of God with you. What to take you to the next level. I have shared with you that which the Lord has given me. And my desire and my prayer is that you come into the season of an everlasting blessing in the name of Jesus. Right now, wherever you are, if you have not given your life to Jesus, before we partake of the communion, I want to pray with you. I want to pray with you before we partake of the communion. If you haven't given your life to Jesus, I want to pray with you. I want you to give your life to Jesus. Then when you give your life to Jesus, we'll partake of the communion. And as we partake of the communion, you see the hand of the Lord come upon you in an unusual way. So if you haven't given your life to Jesus, say with me, Lord Jesus, I come to you just as I am. Forgive me of my sins. Write my name in your book of life. May I serve you all the days of my life. From today, I have decided to follow you. No turning back. No turning back. In Jesus' name, amen and amen and amen. Well, just lift up your voice and let's begin to pray. Just for a few minutes. Just for a few minutes. Just ask God to give you grace. Grace to obey, prompt obedience. Mama Kesha Tayaba. Grace to walk in prompt obedience. Grace to walk in prompt obedience. Grace to walk in prompt obedience. Se kakaton de lebrisk. Matele kreshanda. Ask God, ask God to give you grace. Grace to walk in prompt and complete obedience. Grace to walk in complete obedience. In the name of Jesus is coming upon you today. An unusual grace. Matele Krashka. It is to your advantage to walk in grace. It is to your advantage to walk in grace. To walk in humility. To walk in prompt obedience. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Abro Shendelebre. Ask God to give you grace. Grace to walk in prompt obedience. Grace to walk in prompt obedience. Receive it now. Receive it now. Receive it now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Well, we are about to partake of the communion. The Bible says, On the night when Jesus was betrayed, He took bread. And he said, this is my body broken for you. For as often as you do this, do this in remembrance of me. As you partake of this communion today, healing is flowing through you. Deliverance.
grace for unusual exploits comes upon you today. In Jesus' name, the body of Christ, take and eat. The same manner he took the cup. And after supper saying, This is the new covenant in my blood. This do. And as often as you drink it, do it in remembrance of me. It's a cup of a new covenant. It's the blood of the new covenant. As we partake of this communion, freshness will come upon you. Healing will flow through your body. Cancer is destroyed. Arthritis is destroyed. Diabetes is destroyed. In the mighty name of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, take and drink. Now I want you to take the anointing oil. The Bible says in the book of Isaiah chapter 10 verse 27, it says it shall come to pass on that day that the yoke shall be removed. The burden shall be removed and the yoke shall be destroyed. Because of the anointing. Take the anointing oil. This oil now is turned into the power of Jesus. It's not the power of God. It is no longer an ordinary oil any longer. It is now the anointing of Jesus. The anointing that removes every burden. That destroys every yoke. Every yoke of bondage, right now, it is destroyed. Anything that has held you bound and captive is coming to an end now. In the name of Jesus. Fresh anointing. Lord, cause your anointing to be fresh. This month will be a great month for you. In the name of Jesus, contracts from all over the world, billions are finding their way into your bank account. In the name of Jesus, wealth, favor from on high. In the mighty name of Jesus. This is now the power of God. Line up your family for the anointing. Fresh anointing. Come. Receive fresh anointing. Grace for prompt and unusual obedience comes upon you. You will be the head and never the tail. All the days of your life. Unusual favor. Unusual favor. Breaking barriers, taking territories to the glory of God's name. In the name of Jesus. Fresh anointing. Grace for prompt obedience comes upon you today. Receive a new anointing. I anoint you today for unusual exploits. In the name of Jesus, I decree over you for eternity an open heaven. An open heaven. Every land you step your foot in, that land will yield for you. Your gifts and your talents will not be swallowed up. It will be a blessing to the world. Creative ideas. New realms of breakthroughs. Wealth and riches coming upon you. I decree you will live holy the rest of your life. 
in the name of Jesus. Grace for the blessing comes upon you today. In Jesus' name. Amen. Basha dealing in. Let me anoint her first. Receive grace for an open heaven. We receive grace to walk in prompt obedience. Right now, this anointing is a mark of greatness upon you. Any evil eye that looks at you is destroyed now. Amen. I decree over your life from today an open heaven Amen. that can never be shut. Amen. Open doors Amen. that no man can shut Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. I call you blessed. Amen. In every nation you step foot into, you will be called the blessed one Amen. in the name of Jesus. I anoint you today with the grace to walk in prompt obedience and to have access to unusual breakthroughs. The heavens are open over you. I prophesy over you today that the world will hear your voice. Nothing can silence you. The world will hear of your voice. The world will hear of your wisdom. The wisdom that God has placed in you, the world will hear of it. In these coming months, nations are coming to seek that wisdom that God has placed in you. I bless the works of your hands. No more struggles. No more toilings. Open heaven. Unusual favor. Unusual dimensions of favor. Favor from God. Favor from men. Favor from all over the world. A global name you will become. In the name of Jesus. I decree upon you today a fresh anointing. 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 A fresh anointing in the name of Jesus. You have come into your season of unusual restoration. Healings and miracles will be flowing through you. In the name of Jesus. Restoration of the years. Restoration of the glory of God upon your life. In the name of Jesus. It is done. In Jesus name. Amen. And amen. Receive the anointing. Wherever you are. I anoint you now. I anoint you now. I anoint your hands. Your hands will carry wealth from today. I anoint your head. You will be the head and not the tail. I anoint you today. An open heaven comes upon you. Your ministry is flourishing. Your business is flourishing. Your children are flourishing. In the name of Jesus, I call it done. In Jesus' name, amen and amen and amen. Father, we thank you. We've come to the end of the prophetic encounter. Father, we thank you for your grace, for unusual dimension of grace and favor and mercy upon your people. Give everyone watching testimonies. Thank you for answers to their prayers. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen and amen and amen. We love you. We love you. We appreciate you. We thank God for your lives. We want you to get ready. The month of August, there will not be any prophetic encounter. But the month of August, from the 4th, to the 7th of August, we have Covenants 2020 with special guest speakers, Pastors Taiwo and Nomti Odukoya from the Fountain of Life Church, Lagos, Nigeria. There will be a great blessing. I want you to be expectant. Prophetic Encounter will come back second week in September. So let's get ready. 
there will be unusual testimonies coming your way in the name of Jesus. Well, uh, in this month, we're having 40 days of glory. There will be specialized services. Uh, next week, Thursday, we have a special guest speaker from Ghana, uh, Pastor Eric Hemeku from the International Central Gospel Church, Open Heavens, glory be to God. And then the following Thursday, we have Dr. John Paul, founder and senior pastor of Covenant Church from Southampton, UK. And then the last Thursday, we have Pastor Koza from uh, His Grace Tabernacle Church from South Africa. You will be blessed. So be expectant. All the specialized, all the Thursday services, we're having special guest speakers and it will be a great blessing to us. So be expectant. Well, we'll be back this Sunday for five powerful services starting from half seven in the morning, half seven uh, first service, uh, nine o'clock second service, uh, half ten third service, uh, six thirty fourth service, and then 9.30 p.m. our last service for Sunday, and you'll be blessed. Amen. And then the, the teenagers are telling me to remind you of their Takeover Nation service on Saturday, tomorrow, well, tomorrow from 10.30 in the morning and 6.30 p.m. in the evening. We love you. God bless you. Thank you so much for joining us. If you haven't subscribed to our 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 channel yet we want to encourage you please subscribe to all the thousands of people who are watching from all over the world colombia argentina brazil south africa uganda malawi australia tanzania we love you all we appreciate you here from the uk from us and especially to that church uh, that decided not to have their service but to tune into the prophetic encounter in california god bless you god expand your ministry more and more and all the ministry that are hooked on to this service life may god bless you we are waiting for testimonies we were waiting for your blessings and your breakthroughs send us your prayer request to uh prayer at solutionchapel.org uh, right now, there are pastors waiting to pray for you. If you call on the WhatsApp number that is displayed, there's a pastor waiting to pray for you in Jesus' name. We love you so much. Thank you. I want to appreciate my wife for taking three days for uh, singing powerfully and our precious keyboard players and our live streaming team, our camera people. We all love you. And our moderators uh, all over the world, those who are working behind the scenes, uh, God bless you. All our pastors, God bless you for working hard. All our prayer team, our prayer team have been praying and believing that God will do exploits in your life. We thank God for their lives. Amen. All the members of Solution Chapel International, we love you. You are such a great blessing. And we are doing, we are seeing what we have never seen before. This week we saw 13,000 watching live on YouTube. And uh, we have seen it's just grown. It's growing. It's growing. And to God alone be all the glory. To all our members, uh, those who are working on YouTube, God bless you. Those who are working on Facebook, God bless you. And everyone that is making it possible for us to bring you these live streams to be a blessing in your house. We love you all and God bless you in Jesus' name. Let's share the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Go from this place with the confidence and assurance, knowing that you are a solution to the nations. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you. Amen. May the heavens be open over you Amen. as you walk in prompt obedience. Go from this place with this confidence and assurance, knowing that you are a solution to the nations. We love you. God bless you. Have a glorious weekend. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.